I always put what uh, my most important uh, valuables into the uh, into my uh, backpack, which I take as carry-on luggage on, into the cabin. And medicine is is a big deal. I mean, I'm, I'm getting on a bit. Old buggers like me, unfortunately, have to take more and more medication as time goes by. And uh, I've got quite a lot for a, a, a long-term um, trip, so uh, it's a fair bit to pack in there. But I, I try to put as much as I can, uh, specifically eye drops, because I've got to take eye drops, and they're, they're, they're something I may not be able to get overseas. So I always make sure they go into the backpack, and uh, and some of the other stuff can be in the main luggage. But uh, yeah, stuff that I can't buy locally, yeah, I put there. So you've got to prioritise. And shoes, just get light shoes, don't get anything particularly uh, uh, heavy. I've got some, some clod hoppers that are in the closet and um, I'm not even going to take them. Well, there's two reasons for that. It's heavy, uh, I don't, wouldn't use them very much, and, uh, and you might get pulled up when you're going through a um, through security check if you've got really heavy soled shoes, they might want, to, want you to take them off. So, you can avoid that hassle as well by doing that. The clothing, I would also suggest that um, not if you're giving you going to a warm environment, it's a good idea to take some long sleeved uh, shirts, just in case you get sunburnt. So at least you can still go out and not uh, you know, be worried about getting uh, uh, making it even worse, the, the uh, aggravating your uh, sunburn. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that. In certain things, certain places, you if you want to go to temples and what have you, in 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 um, in Thailand, you're supposed to wear um, more modest clothing, so long sleeve shirts. And uh, I'm going to take one pair of long pants uh, for that as well. And I found out that I actually intonations in um, in uh, Vietnam have got a, uh, a a walking tour, an historical walking tour. And uh, after I signed up for it, then they said you need to have um, uh, dress modestly, which means you have to uh, you have to have uh, proper shoes and uh, not thongs or sandals, and uh, well, especially thongs. And you can't wear shorts, so uh, that's another reason just to have a pair of, of some form of shoes, enclosed shoes for for those sort of occasions. Bottle opener is is handy. You just never know. Um, you can buy them over there, obviously, but. I like to travel with one. I bought one in Thailand and I'm going to bring that. If you like a bottle of wine, I would suggest that you take a corkscrew because unlike Australia, most countries still use uh, corks in the bottles. Uh, certainly found that out in Spain because it's a big industry over there, cork growing. So Another thing I take is toilet paper. And uh, it's got two benefits there. I think it's better quality than what you'll find generally in Southeast Asia, the one that I've got. Um, and uh, also you can use it to, as padding in the, uh, in, inside your, your luggage so you can sort of make sure you know, if there's something that's a little delicate, put it around there, it'll, it'll provide a little protection as well. Adapter plugs are, uh, are a must. Again, they can be purchased overseas, but I've, 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 I've got a couple. I find two, I need two, so, um, uh, and they work in most countries, Asia, and, and I found in Spain it was fine as well. Um, and I've got one that's new and it's a bit firmer. That's the one I, I use for, uh, for say, my shaver and what have you. Uh, the other one is fine for my computer. So I need it. I need it. Le a couple makes makes it a lot easier. So, and uh, I also take uh, nail clippers and um, and toe clippers. Those sort of things. I think. I think again, you can buy them OS, but I'd like to be prepared. The camera I'm speaking to you on right now is a Sony Handycam. And it has one advantage in that it's, uh, you've got a zoom lens, but I don't use it that much, to be quite frank. And the disadvantage of it is that it's heavy. It's a um, uh, it's heavy and bulky. So I, because it's a high value item, it's probably the highest value item I take on my trip. Um, I then take it in my uh, my carry on luggage, but it takes up a bit of space in my backpack. And it's a little on the weighty side, so it's not great that way. So in the future, I'd probably prepare to have a... I'd, I'd, I'd like to have a more like a single lens reflex camera that works with video as well. And I've seen the results of those on YouTube, and they're, they're pretty good quality. Uh, but for the time being, I'll keep using this Sony uh, Handycam. It's a very good camera. It's just that logistically, it's, it, it's a bit of a worry. So if you're going to have cameras, try to think of small cameras if you're traveling, if you want to travel light. The GoPro is brilliant for that.
I, I like to take a little bit of cash so I can actually change it because you get better rates. On this trip, I've actually transferred funds to Vietnam, so I've got uh, money already waiting in my account, so that's good. But unfortunately, if you're a short-term traveller, you don't have the luxury about to set up a, uh, a Vietnamese bank account. They've just tightened up the regulations and you'd need to show a, um, that you want a, uh, that you, did you have a visa or work visa or whatever for a year. So that I was very lucky I got in early in the year before these regulations were tightened. Another thing I use, this is something for, as a, an HDMI cord, uh, which I have in the back of my monitor here into my computer. Now, I use it because sometimes you'll find that when you, when you go to a place uh, you have a hotel room or an Airbnb booking or whatever, uh, there'll be a monitor there and, uh, and you might have a 50% chance that it's got an HDMI input. And I'll, with my laptop, I've got uh, some entertainment on the actual hard disk. And if I plug that into my computer, I can then watch it on the big screen. So that's, that's nice to have. But of course, you have to obviously have a laptop and you have to have uh, material on it. But it, you can use it for anything. It could be YouTube uh, videos, whatever you want to watch in big screen format. So it's, it's good. Uh, also take an umbrella. Again, you can buy them locally. As a matter of fact, the one that I've got now is actually uh, a Vietnamese one. So I'll pack that in. There's um, some general uh, ideas here about uh, about preparing before you actually leave for the trip. Now, basic things like, and, and these things can be forgotten, uh, turning off the lights, uh, air con, fans, whatever appliance you've got on, make sure that's switched off and substitute it for a motion um, light, a motion detecting light so that it will come off and on from time to time. So if you're away for, for an extended period, it looks as though someone's going in and out of the house. Another thing you, can, you may forget to do, and, and uh, I think I've done this one or two, two times, Make sure you get rid of all your veggies because you, the last thing you want to return to uh, to, uh, to home finding you've got rotted vegetables in your cupboards. That's pretty disgusting. So make sure you, you get rid of all of those before you go. And, and as far as actually, I once I actually switched off my uh, refrigerator before I went uh, for a, a month trip to, um, to Thailand. And uh, when I got home, because uh, <laughs> they left the door open, there was all this mold on the outside. So if you're gonna do something like that, uh, you wanna clean the fridge really thoroughly. And I, I found out the hard way that that needs to be done. F since then, I just leave the power, I just leave the, the fridge on, I don't switch it off. And uh, it, I don't find the power bills go up much. I think, look, basically most of the power I'm paying for is for the actual, uh, is to have it to the home, not the actual usage. So it doesn't seem to make much difference. So I just leave the fridge on. I, I've uh, actually upgraded my internet connection. Um, I'm with TPG, but with this particular plan, you can also downgrade with uh, no additional cost. And if I can, I'm currently paying around uh, $80 a month at the moment for my internet, uh, but I can downgrade that to a $29.90, oh, about no, 30 bucks basically, a 30 buck plan with very little download allowance and what have you, but it doesn't matter. I'm not here. So I don't need it. So what I'm going to do before, I did this on the last trip, I'm going to do it on this trip, I'm going to downgrade online my uh, internet connection, which will save me, uh, well, it could save me 150 bucks or so. So it's, it's worth doing, yeah. It's, it's not, not that trivial. It's, um, uh, if you're on a higher plan, it, uh, it's a way of, of um, you know, reducing your expenses while well away. So that's a tip I'd have for you. Another thing you should do is inform your bank of your travel details, mainly because if you want to use your credit card, or even if you don't necessarily want to use it overseas, which I don't generally do, not, not for um, uh, over-the-counter uh, transactions anyway, I, I use, might use it online. But the point is, if you do use it, uh, physically need to use it, maybe you've had money stolen or whatever, for whatever reason you need to use your credit card, you need to tell your bank where you're going to be, which countries you're going to be at a particular particular dates, so that they won't cut you off. Because they will, if they suspect any fraudulent um, uh, action activity. The fact is, they're going to cover their asses. They're not going to be so worried about your inconvenience. Their major concern is is not being up for uh, fraudulent transactions. 
So uh, that is a very important thing to remember too. Con uh, I, I just do it online. I can just leave a message with them and I do that every trip. So I think that's a really important thing to do. Always uh, print out um, all, all your, um, your booking plans, including flights, uh, bookings for accommodation, um, and any other important information. I've got uh, uh, tr my travel insurance set up and I've got, a, I've got the policy printed out. Uh, I also had to get my visas for Vietnam done. You don't have to do that for Indonesia or uh, Thailand, but you do for, uh, for Vietnam as an Australian citizen. So I've got that all sorted and printed out. The thing you need to think about if you've got plants you're worried about, my suggestion, if you're going away for an extended period again, um, use water crystals. They work really well. Um, I've, I've allowed my plants to die in this particular time, so the last trip and this trip, I'm not going to worry about it. But if you've got some plants that you really want to keep alive, uh, you can use water crystals. You can make, you can do them in a condensed sort of form, and they, they form a sort of a jelly, and you can just dig it in with the mulch or whatever that, around the plant. And it does actually work, and it gives them. Uh, it'll it'll keep moistening them up for months. It does. It's a great great system. So it's fairly inexpensive. You buy it at Bunnings. Make sure you you charge up your devices before you leave, especially your mobile phone. Um, and uh, and say um, I use a tablet if I'm well, for entertainment, what have you. And, uh, and make sure that's fully charged before you get on the plane. If you're in an area like I'm in, where and I'm leaving during a time that's actually um, uh, the, the, is turning into the uh, cyclone season, you want to make sure that you, uh, you make sure your, any furniture that could be flying around is, is either put inside or I've got these metal chairs that will stack them all up together. It might be good, but I might just slip them inside as well just to make sure there's nothing uh, that can cause too much damage on my balcony. And uh, this is an important one. Make sure you, you're careful about what you post on social media. You don't want to give everybody, telling everybody exactly what you're doing and uh, where you're living and what have you. You need to, uh, uh, to be a little um, cautious about that and maybe tell your neighbour about what you're doing. And if you're in a mic situation like Body Corporate, give them a heads up about what's going on. Other thing is that this is something I use, just peace of mind. Um, if I've got my place vacant for a while, I've, got, I've organised a house sitter. I think it's a really important thing to do. Get someone to sit in here and, um, and it provides you with security and, um, and it's just, just uh, a, a good thing to do. Make, you know, it's, um, yeah, I, I would recommend that. So it's a win-win, win-win for the people uh, staying here. They get uh, zero or virtual zero accommodation and I get peace of mind. So I think it's a good deal. The thing you can do, it, this is uh, from my last trip, get a travel card uh, so that you can actually have currency in the local currency. I did that for Spain. I, I never actually had to use it for its intended purpose. But what I did was I did at least withdraw the, the funds in the travel card and I changed them back in Vietnam into Dong. So I mean, I lost a little bit of money because it was initially changed from Australian dollars to, to, uh, to Euros and then from Euros to Dong, but I didn't lose that much. And it was, um, it was a way of at least having a secure amount of money in, in the card, uh, as well as cash I had on hand. So it just a, it seemed like a prudent thing for me to do. Um, other people have complained about it. it look, the, the ANZ one is that the thieves aren't too bad on it. It's not bad that way, but I have heard people complain about uh, how it doesn't work in certain countries. It worked okay in Spain, uh, but it that they've got a lot of different passwords and logins and things. It's very confusing the way it's set up. So I think ANZ could make it a lot simpler system than what they have. But it did actually work for me. I was able to withdraw funds and, I, and the, the ATM fee wasn't too high. So that worked out okay. So it's something just think about, you know, there are plenty of other cards apart from the ANZ one around. So uh, just do a bit of research and, and find out what's available. Uh, other thing I would suggest you do is use a money belt. Um, I've done that for years now and I find I've never had an issue since, but I was robbed a couple of times in the past. Uh, mind you, I was robbed once with when I had a money belt, but that wasn't the money belt's fault. I did, wasn't wearing it properly when I got robbed, and that just shows you how important they are to have. So uh, it may be a little a dis bit of discomfort, but I suggest that uh, if you're in a foreign country 
and you, you just the last thing you want uh, is to to be uh, is to be pickpocketed, and that's one way to really avoid it. Uh, and especially if you've been out in the grog, it's even more important to have something like that, I think. So it's worked for me anyway, so I would vouch for that. And of course, the other thing you can use in a place like Vietnam and, and, and Thailand as well, and probably Indonesia on top, is you can use safes. A lot of, the, a lot of these rooms have safes inside them, so uh, that's another way you can secure uh, money and what have you. What I suggest you do is you put some money in the safe and you keep money on, on your hand with yourself. So you split the, the, the risk between the two. Another thing I would suggest is buying a local SIM card, especially if you're in a country for a, for a reasonable period of time, a week or more, for instance. The phone numbers of many bar girls in, in Vietnam is very easy to do, I've got to say, it's quite extraordinary. But the beauty of it is if you've got that and you actually text with them, it most of the time their, their English, their written English is so much better than the spoken English and it's a really good way of communicating with SMSs and texting. Texting is, is really effective way of communicating in Vietnam. So you can use that for, for that type of communication or if you for your accommodation as well. And um, it's, it also means that you can use Grab to its full extent. Uh, so it's got a lot of benefits in it. So if you're there for any length of time, and, the, and really the SIM cards aren't expensive, that's the other thing. So uh, mind you, um, if you get a, a um, a tourist SIM card at the airport, I don't think they have that facility, so you have to actually go to a place like uh, Viet Viettel uh, Outlet, for instance, I'm using Viettel, but there's Mo MobiNet, there's a number of different carriers in, uh, in Vietnam that you can use. I, I, I think uh, Viettel is about the best one, so, uh, and then they're, they're quite close, they've got an outlet that's in District 1 or very close to, it's in, I think it's between Bo Vien uh, which is the backpacker district and the centre, so it's quite conveniently located. So that would be a suggestion I'd make too. Uh, another thing I would suggest is is learn a few words of, of the local language. That local lingo goes a long way and may get you better customer service and also discounts. And um, yeah, you, you might you, overall. I just think it's a, it's a polite thing to do and can have benefits for people as well. So just it's being able being able to say thank you in a language is really important and hello. Uh, just the basics is a good start, and then you can work from beyond that. But it's, it, it, is, uh, it does actually um, hold you in good stead with the locals. When you go overseas, you use the same caution you would with strangers that you would at home. Now, I didn't do that in Bangkok. I let my guard down, and I almost became the victim of a, a classic gambling, a card-playing scam. I, they took me to a... a, a, a um, uh, location, a suburb uh, north in Bangkok, and uh, and gave me some food, and then started to sit, start this this thing where you play these cards, like card games, just for fun. And I thought the whole thing was a bit fishy, so I decided to uh, to make an exit, a quick exit. And luckily, I did because I don't you know that I got back to my room and I discovered uh, the the actual travel guide I had were actually outlined this exact scam, this this ga gambling scam. I got away with Scott free, but I came close to uh, possibly losing quite a bit of money. Now, travel insurance, I, uh, I think personally I would say for, uh, for medical insurance, you should take out travel insurance because of accidents. No matter how young you are or fit you are, you can still have an accident, especially if you're, say, riding, uh, you're hiring a bike or you're riding a uh, moped, uh, rope riding on a moped or uh, riding pillion, which is what I do. So I've actually taken out an extra cover this time. They've added on one with um, with the uh, with the, the company that I'm gone with. Uh, they've actually it's cost me 35 bucks extra, but it covers me if I'm travelling on the back of a motorbike, which I will be doing. So, uh, but the, the 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 medical insurance for me is important because um, I did actually have to go to hospital and without having. A normal normal uh, med, uh, travel insurance, which will cover you up front. Um, you don't you know you don't have to pay pay out of your credit card uh, if if you're uh, qualified. Uh, but in my case, I uh, I I, would, I had the automatic travel insurance that came with the uh, credit card. But the thing is, they will not cover you at the time you're injured. You have to pay up front and then try to get the money back off them months later when, after you've returned. Uh, which I did, and luckily I got my money back, but I realised that it's not an ideal way of, of handling your insurance. So 
Uh, in future, I always am now going to pay for specific, uh, that's the basic medical cover I think is essential. And, um, and yeah, if I say I have lose luggage, I have travel problems and what have you, I'll claim that on the, the insurance that comes with the credit card, but for the health insurance, I'm taking it out specifically to cover that, so I, don't, uh, I won't have to pay any money if uh, I come to grief. Lastly, I would say um, uh, do your research. Most of us have our access to online. People obviously watching this would have online access. Uh, know your location, do your research before you, you turn up to say a foreign uh, place. Check out forums, get a feel for the place, get some local knowledge and, um, and you, it'll give you a bit of a head start. Uh, hopefully uh, this might have prompted you to uh, think about a few issues you may not have and uh, it's a, this, this list has been of some use. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please uh, consider subscribing to my channel if you think there's anything there of, uh, of use to you or entertainment or whatever. And uh, either give, do that or give me a thumbs up or, or if you're feeling really energetic, do both. That'd be great. Uh, but uh, please don't ignore me. That's the worst thing you can do on YouTube is be ignored.